everyone. Welcome to the first SV virtual event of Startup Brand Shell Court. Uh, since we cannot do events, you know, physically here, here and there, so Startup Grind community, we have started doing these virtual events. And uh, the good part is that is that our uh, audience can be global and we are not restricted with locations anymore. So today we are going to have on our show Mr. Monas Rahman. And I've been wanting to call him at my event for a very long time now. However, he lives in, Sh uh, in Lahore and I live in Shalkot and we run Shalkot chapter. So it was indeed difficult. But now since we are no more restricted by boundaries, so here we have him. Uh, on our show. Hello, Mr. Munez. How are you doing? Uh, uh, hi, Roshani. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. So for right now, uh, sir, for now, we have like 13 attendees. So we're just going to wait for more attendees to join. And until then, uh, we can just talk about what you are doing during your quarantine. I've been seeing you cook a lot. Have you become a chef lately? I'm sorry? I'm saying that I've been seeing a lot of posts about food and you cooking. So have you like just become a chef already during quarantine? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, there's been a lot of uh, time to cook and there's been a lot of time to eat. Unfortunately, <laughs> too much time to eat. Um, so, you know, I like to cook anyway. I just love cooking and because there's so much time available, it gives me an opportunity to experiment with my recipes and I have um, the whole family here who has no choice but to eat it. So I've got um, my guinea pigs also. So it's worked out well. Cute. So what else have you been doing? What ha What's keeping you busy these days? You know, really, I think what's been keeping me the most busy is the times are so uncertain right now, as you know, Prashane. Uh, everything has been reset. All the assumptions have been reset in terms of business this in terms of a society, in terms of the economics, uh, in terms of welfare, and uh, it's been quite a jolt. So trying to figure out, as I think everybody else is, what we can do in our own capacity as individuals and organizations to uh, help with the situation. So I've been spending a lot of time um, in the worker areas, the colonies of the workers, speaking to the workers, um, helping with some aid efforts over there. Great. Uh, spending Great. a lot of time with the hospitals, going into the ICUs, trying to figure out what things we can make, what things they need. So I think about 50% of my time has actually been going into trying to figure out how um, how we can help. Right, that's nice, that's nice. So I mean, I'm sure like for whatever ways we can give back to our society, everyone, everyone's been up to doing that. So right, so we have a good amount of attendees right now, 15, so I think we should formally begin. Uh, I've already uh, made you wait a lot, a lot before. So, all right. So, uh, no in order to formally begin, can you just give us a short introduction of yourself, what you do, what are your current projects going on? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, I uh, run a jobs platform called Rosie.pk. Rosie is used by about um, 65,000 organizations, employers who hire. They post job advertisements and they hire through our platform. We have about 9.8 million uh, users or professionals who've uploaded their CVs. They apply for jobs on the platform. So we process about 40,000 job applications a day. So we really are on the pulse of the hiring economy, you know, the pulse of what people need, what skills are needed, um, which sectors of the economy are growing because you hire when you are growing. And so I started Rosie, um, you know, in 2007, it's been a very long journey. And uh, while, while I was doing that, there are a number of other things I became involved with. We launched one of the first mobile wallets in the country that's smartphone based called SimSim through another organization uh, that I'm a co-founder of called Finja. And SimSim was the first uh, smartphone based mobile wallet uh, that allowed you to open a bank account in under two minutes. And then EasyPesa, JazzCash, all of the others, uh, are, are also there now, but the processes that we invented are the processes that we got approved by State Bank, which right. now everybody else is using, including the banks. Uh, so I've got uh, a lot of stuff going on on the fintech side. Um, I've also incubated another startup called called Easy Tickets, which lets you buy a bus ticket or a movie ticket online. And now we're expanding that to a lot of other areas. Um, I'm a small investor. In, in a number of startups and an advisor to a bunch of uh, startups as well. 
So that's that's kind of how I keep myself occupied and busy. Right. So I've been doing the online thing in Pakistan for a very very long time. We were the first um, dot com in Pakistan to ever raise a formal institutional round of investment. So the first wow. VC that ever came into the country investing in online came into Rosie. And since then, uh, I have raised about six rounds of investment across all of the companies I'm involved in. So it's a pretty big uh, percentage of all of the VC investment rounds that have entered right. into the country, probably something like 20% or, or so. Nice. So like um, after the this pandemic is over, how do you see market evolving? I mean, we're all expecting a global recession for, I mean, I assume it's going to be there for <clears throat> one and a half year at the very least. So what do you think is going to be the world after coronavirus and Yeah, you know, that's, that's such a good question. And I think everybody needs to be asking themselves that startups, of course, but even midsize and large organizations really need to take a deep look because there's so much disruption that's going on right now because of where the economy is, because user behavior has changed, user adoption of various ecosystems has changed. Things that used to work yesterday will not work tomorrow. So I guess the good news for startups is that startups are in the best position to exploit this. If you're a large company uh, and you have to change everything you're doing, you have manufacturing, you have bank branches, you have all of this investment from a legacy perspective, and now you have to re-cater this to the new economy, it's a pretty big, dramatic, painful shift and uh, large organizations are going to be slow to adopt to this. Startups can react instantly and they can uh, fill in these gaps. And so uh, as horrible as the past events have been, I think this is a great opportunity for startups to uh, find their purpose and to repurpose. I mean, if you were a startup three weeks ago thinking, hey, I know exactly what I'm going to do, and you're still saying, hey, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Either you've really found something that's endurable or you haven't been introspective enough to look at what's actually happening in the market. So what is happening in the market? Well, clearly, uh, e-commerce is on the rise. People are ordering from home. They're ordering everything. You don't want to interact face-to-face -face with people. Even as the dust settles, if you look at the nature of this virus and it's, a, you know, it's going to continue to be infectious even after lockdown. People are going to be very careful in uh, going out and meeting other people and going out to eat at restaurants, going to stores and interacting with salespeople. So I think this is a fundamental shift that has happened forever. And it means that um, online e-commerce, um, using your smartphone in a digital way to do transactions, to conduct things. We're on a Zoom call right now and many organizations, it was unfathomable to be having a company-wide meeting on the internet on Zoom. It was just against the culture, the ethos of the CEO and the you know old establishment there. Everybody's embraced it. Uh, the number of people who are now starting to order at home for th things that they need is also skyrocketing. And these are behavior change points that I think are going to endure And you look at the workers, well now, a platform I'm building, I can speak about that later, is going to be dispersing cash to them through the cash agents, through EasyPesa. So these guys are, uh, the number of uh, individuals who are installing mobile wallets now has increased 350% after this epidemic because it's much easier to exchange cash. These technologies have been around forever, for a few years, but now there's so much pain that people are going to the trouble of going through that curve where there's a friction, installing something new and learning it, people are taking that pain now. So you're seeing user adoption of things that make sense, that make it easier to do things without having to move around. Right. And these, these are the business cases that are going to thrive. And there are hundreds of examples of these. And we can speak about it in more detail as well. Right. But, but there's I mean great opportunity for startups now. But, you know, I mean, there's specific kinds of startups, like, you know, because I personally believe that the purchasing power of people is going to decrease in the coming few months, right? And they're just going to be focusing on the most important products and, you know, luxury bank will, will drastically reduce, right? So in that scenario, only a few kinds of industries can prosper. Is, is, is that so? 
Yeah, and I think, you know, for startups, look, uh, startups don't run the industries. Startups connect the brick and mortar industries to the consumer through right. new innovative ways, right? Right. So, for example, startups don't have um, banks in the back end that they have to reinvent the banking cycle or they don't make the Prada bags, right? Well, the startups have a front end layer which lets you buy them, as an example. So certainly there are very clear signs right now of which industries seem to be uh, well positioned to endure the storm and which industries are going to have a tougher time. But that analysis is going to be short term, right? So if you're building a startup for the next three months, that's not a good idea. You need to build for the next 10 years. Right. And so where we are today and people have frozen spending, what are people buying now? If you go out on the streets and you look, well, yeah, all of the small little shops are open to buy food. The Kriana shops are open. True. Uh, the uh, pharmacies are open. Uh, the banks are open. Hospitals are open, right? So you've got healthcare, you've got internet and telcos and you have consumer spending on essential items that they need to survive. So that's where you are right now. Right. But it's not always going to be the case. And even if there's a recession, the impact on startups of a recession is much less than the large companies because startups are starting with a, with a revenue and client base of zero. So anything incremental you build on top of that is massive. So if you look at the market size overall, it's a big market. Yes, the market's going to contract by 40%, by 50%. But for a little startup, the market is still massive. So if you can create those innovative products in a contracting market where people are more sensitive to cost, that's actually an advantage for startups. Because the market right. size, as far as you're concerned, is still infinite because you didn't have any of it and it's still massive. And you have a, hopefully a disruption or a cost advantage that lets you eat up the market share much faster than the larger players can react. So I think for startups, again, despite the economy slowing down and all of this stuff, I think this is an incredible opportunity. Right. To build a solid business based on revenue, not just eyeballs and users. Right, so we can take it as an opportunity, right. All right, before moving on to the next question, uh, we have a question from the audience, which we'll, we will be taking at the end, but however, there's just one question regard, in regards to work from home. Uh, in fact, even before getting onto that, I would just like to tell our audience that uh, in Startup Grind, the most important thing that we really focus upon is connecting attendees together and, you know, making friends, getting inspired by each other. However, uh, the downside of having a virtual event is that we won't, will not be able to connect you guys together the way that we used to. Uh, I wanted to add, you know, some uh, community engagement uh, activities in this session. However, that could not uh, that did not happen. Uh, but that's like one of the most important parts of our community. Uh, but definitely, we'll try to have it in our other events. And once this pandemic is over, we'll obviously have the physical events as well. And then we'll get on to connecting audience together once again. Right. So once that we had a question earlier that uh, people are saying that people cannot really manage working from home. It's difficult, especially in a country like Pakistan. Uh, what do you have to say about that? How has your experience been? Because you are also a tech startup. So how has your experience, uh, experience been? And also, how about your employees? Are they enjoying? Has their productivity increased or decreased? Please enlighten us on that. So we've been very productive in lockdown. You know, um, we have an open office environment. Everybody's interacting with each other. You can sit anywhere you want. Everybody has a laptop. And so we are very, um, our whole culture has been around people and being flexible and creating small groups and working together on those projects. One of the things we did early on as kind of a self-defense move, which has worked out really well, is we built a virtualized server environment in our office. I'll just explain that a little bit. Yeah. What that means is whenever uh, anybody in our company, my colleagues come to the office, they have their own laptops. Everybody in the company has their own laptops when they join us we hand them a loan for a laptop, but the laptop is their property. So we didn't have an issue where we had to supply equipment to employees. And when they come in on their laptops, what they do is they log into a virtual server in our server room and all of the source code files are, are stored on the server. So they don't have to do much on their own computer. Their computer is a terminal into the server room. This protects our intellectual property. It's not floating around on individuals' laptops. We can control it. We can control the environment, you know, all of 
the settings, the source control, which takes a lot of time to get right on everybody's individual laptops. And as a result of that, when people had to work from home, we turned on our lights in a second. We just gave them a VPN link into the server and it was just as if they were in the office in terms of the environment and the files and all of that. So we really hit the ground running in terms of my sales team, which isn't on this um, environment because they don't need to code. We built a web-based CRM and a mobile app that connects in terms of sales calls, engagements, invoices. That was already on the cloud. My incoming leads, my phone sales team, that was already on the cloud. So we had all of this cloud infrastructure that we used within the office. So when we went home, it worked extremely well. One of the things that was a good surprise to me is how well we're interacting on Zoom. You know, when people are on, they're on. So you can now make an instant call to anybody on Zoom and they'll answer because they're working and you can get the conversations going and you can get two or three more people on the call. So it's just as if I was in the office and I wanted to get three or four people, except it's faster because now they don't have to move their laptops and find a table or a conference room. We just click a button and now we're all on this meeting. We share our screens, the desktops, the designs. Um, we are making a video for a new product that we have created. The video processes, you have the product manager and the content editor who huddle around the graphics person and the guy who's editing the video around one workstation. And they're all saying, oh, you know, Abielico, change this, make this arrow, do that. And this is something that you need to be around each other to do. And mm -hmm. the marketing team was struggling to do this. How do we do this? And what we did was we just shared a desktop of the, of the editor. So as he's editing the video, everybody's seeing it and they're adding their comments. And it worked exceptionally well. Now, mm -hmm. this is a behavior change. People aren't used to behaving this way. So it's a bit uncomfortable. And internet has been choking across the country. So the hiccups have been, well, internet ni chalra, VPN is not connecting. Most of those have been ironed out. And one of my findings is, you know, do I even really need an office? Uh, we've been very productive. Um, but we have lost productivity just because of the physical energy of being next to each other and working from home it's and the kids outside playing and on my head and then chai arie, uh, now I have to go do something because, you know, I've been... so. That's a discipline that I think we're developing. But how many people said from can't work in Pakistan prior to this, right? Allowing our employees from home, very few organizations. When this is over, I think the majority of our organizations are going to have work from home in place because it makes a lot of sense. Nice. I think one thing I should add here is everybody is feeling the pressure on the internet. Internet, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of not stable, hiccuping, you're on a Zoom call, it's not smooth or working. And the reason is because when we connect to the internet from home, what happens is we pay a relatively low price, but it's eventually it's a shared connection. It's not what they call a CIR connection, which is a dedicated kind of a, like, it's like a guarantee of how much of a bandwidth you get, which is what I buy in the office. And it's much more expensive. So the, for the same amount of kind of bandwidth in the office, I'll spend, an order of magnitude higher at the office than I do at home because home users are shared. In the daytime, we're not here. So it's like a bank. So the ISPs know that even though they've offered you this much, you're actually going to consume this much because you're not going to do it all the time and they know they spike at night. Well, what's happened now is all of us are at home and everybody's pulling bandwidth True. more than they have a capacity in the back end because they know if I offer you this much, you're only going to use this much. So they plan for a capacity of this much. So it's like a bank. If everybody withdrew their cash out of a bank today, the bank doesn't have enough money because they have a you know, float. So the same thing's happening with internet now. So ISPs are quickly gearing up and buying more of bandwidth on the back end to be able to handle this. So that's a glitch I think a lot of us are seeing. Yeah, definitely. Like even for this, for this webinar, I've got two internet devices and I'm not even sure if both will not go off suddenly, right? So that is a huge problem that we've been seeing. And yes, definitely the distractions at home, uh, they're crazy too, definitely. These, I think these two are the major issues that we are facing at home. And also people, I think, just enjoy, you know, just dressing up and going at work. So maybe that is a cause for loss productivity too, maybe. So, right, I don't have Corona. So before moving on, um, I just wanted to know one thing. In Pakistan, we often see amazing startups coming up. 
we we get to see amazing ideas amazing people actually trying to pull off something however we also see most of them failing why is that so well you know um 9 out of 10 startups fail anyway that's that's a rule of the world it's not a pakistani rule that's a universal rule startups are risky people are trying to find out new areas and uh, so this is more of a startup ecosystem question and mm. the startup ecosystem in pakistan is in its very early stages it's, it's in a nascent stages so uh, the more of a supporting <laughs> infrastructure you have especially from a monetization perspective uh, the easier it is for a startup to get viable you know um, in established markets there are a few things that happen large organizations have a history of working with startups and are as insecure about outsourcing uh, key workflows or uh, information in terms of in terms of data they share they're also much more uh, used to working on opex based kind of models where for each time you do this for me i'll give you this amount of money here we're used to saying well here's a certain amount of money make me a software right which is not interesting as a business as far as i'm concerned um and then if you look at the overall market size it's relatively small especially the online economy even e-commerce as a aggregate as a percentage of your retail sales is well below even 1% of retail sales in the us that number has reached like 14 15% now and now i think it's growing well beyond that right so uh the market size is much smaller online advertising is a major source of income for startups because they get the eyeballs and they're able to plug into advertising networks and get monetization out of it our online ecosystem is very small in pakistan so the kind of money you can make from eyeballs if you're like a content site is really 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 small so these are some of the challenges for startups failing in terms of the environment that you're placed into but the other thing that happens is a lot of our startup entrepreneurs are first time entrepreneurs they've read about startups maybe on tech blogs they've got good ideas they understand the market but their ideas are not cooked enough to really be valid or viable as businesses so startups will fail and those people will get smarter and say well this doesn't work it was a cool idea but i can't make a living doing this and i can't make a living doing that we also have a propensity to go for very niche cool models yeah if we did this and this and this it would be so cool it turns out it's such a niche model and people are going for something so specialized because it's cool that they're leaving open the really big opportunities which might not be as exciting so i think these are a couple of the things happening so maturity in terms of the founders which i think evolves every time you fail you get smarter i love entrepreneurs who fail because i know they're going to be smarter it takes two or three times in order to do it right we're still going through a cycle of that our overall ecosystem is smaller the number of vcs entering into the market is increasing dramatically over time it was a very small number we were the only ones that ever raised a venture round for a number of years um right so that activity starting now and to be right. very honest the current environment for innovative entrepreneurs i think you're going to find great things being built right nice all right so uh, most of our uh, audience are from pakistan so uh, i think we should go with bilingual language right acha so my next question is ये जब स्टार्टअप फेल होते हैं इसके उनको प्रोटेक्ट किस तरह से किया जा सकता है बिकॉज आई पर्सनली बिलीव दैट इट्स नॉट ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ दू मैं बट ऑल्सो बिकॉज आर स्टार्टअप आर नॉट बींग प्रोवाइडेड विद क्लियर डायरेक्शन एंड यू नो बहुत सारी चीजें इन टर्म्स ऑफ फाइनेंस इन टर्म्स ऑफ हैंडलिंग किस तरह से चलना है किस तरह से नहीं चलना लाइक वी डू हैव ऑल ऑफ दीज इंक्यूबेशन सेंटर्स हेयर बट फॉर सम रीजन डायरेक्शन में थोड़ी सी कमी आ जाती है दिस इज वट माई बिलीफ इज वट यू हैव टू एड ऑन दैट इज दैट ट्रू नहीं है किस तरह से हाउ आर दे परफॉर्मिंग ऑल ऑफ दीज इंक्यूबेशन सेंटर प्लीज इन वाइड ऑन दैट देखो अगर आप एक स्टार्टअप है और आप ऑन्टरप्रनोर है तो आपका फर्ज है कि अपनी चीजें खुद हल करें ठीक है इंक्यूबेशन भी हो रही है सेंटर्स भी हैं एन आई सीज भी हैं अगर उनसे कुछ आपको मिल सकता है तो अच्छी बात है आप ले लें पर उनका फर्ज नहीं है उन वो मतलब ये आपका हक नहीं है कि आप उनसे कहें कि आपने मुझे नहीं दिया तो इसलिए आई हैव फेल्ड 
ऑन्टरप्रनोर का काम है जो भी इश्यूज आते हैं वो खुद अपना हल करें अगर कोई रिसोर्स अवेलेबल है तो फिर उनको इस्तेमाल करें अगर नहीं अवेलेबल है देन यू हैव टू क्रिएट रिसोर्स ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स डू ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स की जो सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट क्वालिटी है वो ये है कि वो रिसोर्सफुल होते हैं जब रिसोर्स नहीं होते तो दे फाइंड अ वे टू मेक इट हैपन तो ये जो अप्रोच है कि यार वो स्टार्टअप्स के लिए फंडिंग नहीं है स्टार्टअप्स के लिए सपोर्ट नहीं है स्टार्टअप्स के लिए ये नहीं है तो फिर आप ऑन्टरप्रन ना बने आप स्टार्टअप ना करें फिर स्टार्टअप आपके लिए नहीं है तो यू हैव टू बी रेडी फॉर अ वेरी डिफिकल्ट जर्नी जब जब हमने स्टार्ट किया था हमारे पास कोई इन्वेस्टमेंट नहीं थी नो सपोर्ट नो क्लाइंट ये सब कुछ अपने करना होता है अपने हाथों से करना होता है Right. Startup founders need to understand if they're going to be entrepreneurs, you you can't complain. And I'm sorry, that's a very cold answer, but I'm being brutally honest because if you're expecting for somebody to make something easy for you, you're going to fail. Because it may hurdles on a while. Okay. If you have an expectation that someone will come and help you, it will not happen. And your startup will fail. Right. That that does make sense, actually. Right. So, what do you think that the startups need to do? For everybody here. Right. What do you think uh, startups should do? So that they look, I mean, the fail rate, the percentage, is reduced. What is needed to be done? I'm sorry, your voice is a little bit breaking. I'm saying, what can the startups do? What can the startups do in order to uh, lower down the percentage of failure? Yes. Ah, zabardas, zabardas, zabardas. Um, I I think three, four things are. First thing is that whatever your idea is, it should be tested. It should be tested before you go and build something out. So, for example, if you have a product that I am going to build um, a website that. Uh, महीने मेरे प्रोग्रामर्स मैं सारा ये आई मेक वेबसाइट ये सारा और फिर उसको मैं ओपन कर देता हूं कि आ जाओ हो गया बन गया उसके बाद इस तरह होता है कि कोई नहीं आता आपके सेल्स नहीं होते और फिर आप कहते हैं यार ये क्या हुआ ओके नाउ आई हैव टू डू अ डू पर इस तरह नहीं होना चाहिए When you go out and build something, you should have a pilot, a test in mind. आपके पास कोई client होना चाहिए. You should have a company that says, "How oh, I need this. I'm going to invest in the pilot with you, if not financially, at least in terms of a support." और वो idea validate होना चाहिए. क्योंकि validation comes from the market, not from your imagination. आपके imagination से अच्छे ideas आते हैं. They're kind of disruptive ideas, but वो ideas जो हैं वो incrementally, quickly. they have to go through a test right experienced entrepreneur yeah all right guys I'm i sorry. think i got it's okay yeah uh-huh. yeah in fact somebody just texted us as well monis uh, your voice is breaking so is it okay now okay. or you need to come again i just did Uh, right, I logged fine. out. I came back. All right. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's fine. It's perfectly fine now. Yeah. Continue, please. Acha, acha. So, so I was saying that startups have to iterate. So, कोई चीज जो भी idea आपका है, आपकी imagination से आता है, बहुत अच्छी बात है. उसको आप iterate करें, client को दें और देखें अगर उससे आपकी आमदनी आ सकती है. If the client is willing to pay or the customer is willing to pay. If you can't prove that they're willing to pay, then you have to iterate. क्योंकि अल्टीमेटली यू हैव टू मेक मनी और हमारे एनवायरनमेंट में ये है कि स्टार्टअप्स नीड टू बी कैश फ्लो पॉजिटिव उनकी आमदनी आनी चाहिए अर्ली इन द साइकिल अगर आप यूएस में बैठे हैं इंग्लैंड में बैठे हैं वहां पर वीसीज बहुत सारे आपको कहेंगे ये ले आठ मिलियन डॉलर को बनाए फिर आप बहुत आराम आराम से कहते हैं अच्छा एक दो साल तो नहीं करूंगा कुछ यहां पर यू डोंट हैव दैट लग्जरी बट आई यू द बेस्ट स्टार्टअप आर बिल्ट दैर आर बिल्ट टू बी प्रोफिटेबल अर्ली ऑन that get the customer base early on or what as startups hote that don't need funding so don't cry about funding ki koi vc nahi aa raha main wo invest nahi kar raha to nahi bana sakta this is 
what is going to be a difference between the hobbyist entrepreneurs who want it easy and to have all the money in aram se ho jayega and people who really want to make impact and if you want to be an entrepreneur just because you think it's very cool to be an entrepreneur it's a wrong reason if you're the entrepreneur is a byproduct of what you do you have a problem you want to solve something you want to do an area you know about and you do it and you solve a problem then you get the label of being an entrepreneur you don't say i want to be an entrepreneur now let me think what problem can i solve right because it's a different approach you have to be doing something very very real right yeah it does make sense so uh, you've actually spent quite a lot of time in the us and uh, uh, you know you you've been in their tech world as well so how can you compare the two like what differences do you see in san francisco's tech world and in pakistan's tech world uh, and how do you think all right first tell us about the differences that you see there देखो जब मैं यूएस में था आई वॉज इन इन द वैली जहां पर ये सारे स्टार्टअप स्टार्ट हुए हैं गूगल हॉटमेल फेसबुक बहुत स्मॉल एरिया इट्स अबाउट थर्टी स्क्वेयर माइल एरिया जहां पर ये ऑल ऑफ दिस एक्टिविटीज हैपनिंग वहां पर डॉट कॉम बूम जब हो रहा था वहां पर बिलियन डॉलर हर महीने इन्वेस्ट हो रहा था उस छोटे से इलाके में हर महीने न्यू स्टार्टअप में एक्टिविटीज में और फिर उसके बाद देर वॉज डॉट कॉम क्रैश कि ये जो सारे आइडियाज थे फ्रॉम डॉग फूड डॉट कॉम टू यू नेम इट उनमें से 90% परसेंट फेल एंड कंपनीज वेंट आउट ऑफ बिजनेस वो फर्स्ट टाइम ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स थे वो जो वक्त था उधर और हमारा जो वक्त है लॉर ऑफ एनालॉजीज क्योंकि वो न्यू ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स थे स्मार्ट लोग थे हु क्विट देर जॉब एंड सेट मैंने ऑन्टरप्रनोर बनना है ओनली डिफरेंस इज दे हैड वीसीज सो दे कुड टेक वीसी मनी बट वीसीज लॉस्ट ऑल देर मनी VCs की जो इन्वेस्टमेंट थी उससे क्या हुआ उससे ये हुआ कि ये जो ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स थे पीपल हु क्विट देयर जॉब्स न्यू ऑन्टरप्रनोर्स दे गॉट पीएचडीज इन ऑन्टरप्रेन्योरशिप एट द एक्सपेंस ऑफ VCs बिकॉज़ द बिकॉज़ द स्टार्टअप्स जो थे उनके वो दे फेल्ड मगर उस प्रोसेस में दे लर्न सो मच कि फिर दो तीन साल बाद वो फिर अगेन उठे उन्होंने कहा अच्छा अब मैंने ये ट्राई करना है बट दे हैव लर्नड फ्रॉम द मिस्टेक्स एंड ऑल द मनी दे स्पेंट ऑफ द VCs एंड दे गॉट स्मार्टर एंड देन दे डिड इट अगेन तो ये जो एवोल्यूशनरी जो पैथ है आ, हमारे जो स्टार्टअप्स हैं वो इस पैथ में बहुत अर्ली स्टेज पे हैं और वक्त के साथ mm. साथ जैसे न्यू स्टार्टअप्स आएंगे फेल होंगे कुछ विल बी अ सक्सेस द फेलियर्स विल लर्न फ्रॉम द सक्सेस आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ये आपका इकोसिस्टम ग्रो करेगा और ये ग्रो होना है तो वी आर आर अर्ली स्टेजेस वी हैव सम हैंडी कैप्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ द वीसी इन्वेस्टमेंट पर आपको बता रहा हूं कि वो हैंडी कैप भी इलिमिनेट हो जाएगा क्योंकि बहुत mm. से वीसीज आ रहे हैं हमारा इको सिस्टम इज रेडी moment we start to build successful startups hamare local investors aa jayenge jo kahenge ye le you don't have to wait for the american vc fund to invest in you nice nice right all right so my next question is uh what is the next big product that the world is looking at right we we've got whatsapp communi- uh, connecting people we've got facebook connecting people we've got linkedin making opportunities for people alibaba make bringing businesses together etc etc so i think like what is the next big thing that the world is looking at what do you think in your terms what does the world need you know so my focus honestly has been less about what is needed outside in the global market and what is needed inside the country as a domestic opportunity uh what the world needs you know this is something that we can debate forever and what the world the next disruptive technology whatever it is if you talk about it now it's not it's not going to be intuitive you'll say yeah maybe that'll work maybe it won't work if you talked about facebook when it first started i remember when facebook first started facebook and my first company raised investment at the same time and i remember wo kya kar rahe the hoga nahi hoga i don't know ye kya you know and from linkedin I think you know Reid Hoffman the founder was a first investor in my company he started his company when I started it I was involved in starting um my company and we actually outsourced a lot of the work for him when he was creating the platform for LinkedIn again nobody knows that this is the next disruptive trend you can guess but many of those ideas will fail so the probability is very low to hit those really big you know uber style um home runs that actually changed the world um and a lot of those ideas will fail so 
my focus, frankly, has been more on how we can bring our people in this country with the characteristics, the income, internet usage, education, to a critical mass where we can get our economy going in, in this, you know, on these new rails. So from Pakistan, I can speak more about that, sure. what the next sure. big idea is. And I think the next big idea is very clear. It is getting the common man onto these platforms. Right now, who uses these smartphones and internet? Is it all of the 70 million smartphone enabled users? No, it's a very small subset of that. It's people on this call and we are in our own world and we sell shoes to each other and we sell cupcakes and we order food delivery. Which is a big piece of this economy. Uh, our platforms are not usable by that, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're an Uber driver and you've learned to use it. So the next trend is, bringing this technology down and getting these people to be conversant on these smartphones, being able to transact, being able to do things and actually being able to sell to them. And we don't see them as a market right now. You don't see your cook or your maid or a waiter at a store as, as a customer. It's like, yeah, you know, we bought cheese a little They're a part of your economy. So I think whenever you interconnect um, this new medium, the rails that go directly down to the masses, which can interconnect on top of this, you've got something super powerful going on. The banking industry is being disrupted right now. Bank branches bought mangye. They're expensive. When you operational overhead, the cost is very zada. It's a physical location. It's a hardware bhi hai, log bhi hai. They have bills. And what we're seeing now is that maybe you don't need a bank branch at all. Maybe you don't need an office at all, right? These are things that you really have to now think about. And now people can just go around with smartphones and become your agents and your bankers and your onboarders and your food takers, right? This whole freelancing economy. Ye opportunities hain, or ye bohat near term opportunities hain. Right. So, uh, all right, so tell us. China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, my internet just got disconnected, even though I have two devices. But as I said, you cannot trust the internet. Uh, right. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. All right. So, all right. So you were mentioning that we should, should we should bring everyone onto the smartphone and onto the technology, even like this lower class uh, uh, of Pakistan. So how do you suppose that 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 will happen? What can we as entrepreneurs do in regards to that? What I was actually saying is that we need to do the hard work and build the last mile plumbing. This is my meaning that the already internet users who have a smartphone are easy to reach them. Because they have smartphones, they can install your app or your platform online. But there is a very huge piece of this economy, this market, which interconnects now is ecosystem in nahi hai. So entrepreneurs ka kaam hai to figure out unko is ecosystem mein how to plug them in, how to do the connections, how to, to have them a part of this ecosystem. So creating ideas in which you can connect to all pieces of the economy is, is very important. So I think startups ke liye wo baat ahem hoga. Uber did a great job at this. Agar ab Uber ko dekh le, ek kitni speed se Uber aaya hai, within eight do saal ke andar, with Kareem and Uber, they change the way we think. Everybody knows about Uber. My mother knows about Uber. Your khala knows about Uber. The kids know about Uber. Every driver or blue collar worker knows about Uber. And they started to use Uber. So it's, it's been proven that if you create the right models, you get adaption from the entire ecosystem. Or you scale it. So our job is to build those interconnects and glues. Like for example, Nadra, identity card APIs, where APIs available in the payment APIs, Jazz Cash, Easy Pesa, Wallets, SimSim, how to plug those in. Um, we have to create the building blocks. And this is unique to what we can do in Pakistan as entrepreneurs to create the next big ideas. This happened in China. If you go to China and see what the Chinese are doing, they have their ecosystem and block by block, Karchi's interconnects with me again. If you go to China, you can take a smartphone, you can just see on the street, you'll find a bicycle, you'll see a QR code, 
You just scan the QR code on the back, it, it unlocks a bicycle and you're off. Har cheese ke upar wahan par they built QR codes kyunki they've built the building blocks and the interconnects and the rails. This is what Pakistani entrepreneurs have to do. When you do this, the market grows big and then ideas grow big. Having a good idea but not having the plumbing will keep your idea small. True indeed. So uh, like all right, since you've touched this topic, so just tell us about ke aap is cheese se related jo rosy blue ke saath kar rahe hain. So tell us a little bit about that so that our listeners also know that what Rosy is doing in order to fill that gap that you just talked about. Uh acha dekho uh Rosy mein we have the same problem that we have about 9.8 million professionals jo ke Rosy pe aate hain apna CV upload karte hain aur job ke liye apply karte hain. And we have 40,000 of these job applications, 65,000 employers bahut acha chal raha hai. Magar Rosy is still servicing a very niche प्लेटफॉर्म कॉल रोजी ब्लू जो कि ब्लू कॉलर और जो आपके फॉर एग्जाम डेली wagers jo hain and people who work on assignment basis like aapka locksmith who are in the market or a plumber in ko ek platform ke upar where we're creating a rosy blue platform for that aur usme jo challenges hain wo ye hain ki wo internet pe nahi aayenge they don't have laptops to open a browser they have smartphones but the way they use their smartphones is not how you use your smartphone hum to We install apps every second. Acha, ye ye, मतलब new app है हम इसको try करते हैं. उनके phone पे space नहीं होती to try new apps. और अगर space भी हो, they don't understand how to use those apps. And even if they understand, they don't have internet. उनका internet might work when they're at a restaurant where they work and they activate internet through that or through their place of work, right? 3G, 4G उनके पास ठीक है शायद हो, but maybe they'll activate it at night for half an hour. So it's a different way of working. how do you bring this talent onto the platform so what we did was we created a rosy dost which is like an uber agent who we gave our app to a rosy blue ki jo app hai aur wo agent jo hai na wo ja ke phir jo log hai unko is platform ke upar leke aata hai the you know the waiters the plumbers the carpenters the maids the nanny you name it aur isme id card check bhi ho jata hai we do a verification with like a face match ai hai uske skills lete hain we get all of you know references etc it's a very elaborate platform we know what skills he has we create a cv online instantly for them that we can hand them through whatsapp but it's an agent based model uski ek app bhi aa rahi hai aur usse log is platform pe aa rahe hain who are uh, in need of a job either employed or unemployed jab ye crisis erupted we said the joblessness is so high but we need to help these people because i was going into the colonies to talk to them as i built this app mai kehta kya matlab what's happening to you right now aur sab ro rahe the and rightfully so they had no income unki koi aamdani nahi thi they didn't have savings they didn't have jobs we had a lockdown aur hum log kya kar rahe the hum kehte the yaar wo bechara he needs a ration so we would get our friends together we would hand them all the rations we would go to the stores to sara kaam we would hand them rations and then when you would go and give them the ration i would talk to them and they said bhai mujhe aapka ruwabza nahi chahiye mujhe paise chahiye i need money i know what to do with the money and when i talked to my friends i said no they don't know what to do the money don't give them cash kyunki he'll go and buy drugs with it so basically i'm his father ke nahi bete i'm not going to give you cash have a lollipop and stuff. i i i am so actually so i analyze it sorry for cutting but i do actually agree to that you know we are sitting in pakistan we are sitting in a culture where uh, men are superior to women right when you hand over cash to a man in this country and his wife tells him that i need x y z things for the household to work he would probably just slap her and be like i know what i'm doing and he'd actually go and get cigarettes or drugs or whatever you're talking about this is the community that we live in unfortunately so i do sort of agree to what your friends say <laughs> yeah yeah no, no, i mean you know i think this is like a debate when people are starving when they don't have food to eat 
which is what's happening. This isn't extra income. This isn't like a disposable income. Ke chalo, I have enough food to eat and now I have another, you know, investment of cash. But my stomach is full. Oh, this is a I'm going to go and buy my cigarettes or I'm going to go and do this. I'm not going to hand it to my wife who's going to pay for school fees for my kids. Absolutely say it. Ab jo halat hai, these people are starving to death. They do not mm. have food. They do not have a means to put food in the mouth of their stomach of their kids. And when you are in a situation like that, you want that money to go there as quickly as possible so they can put food in their It can recycle in to their own ecosystem then you call the there are fruit sellers food sellers who's nobody's you have to trust that he are you able to hear me Roshani? yeah hello. Uh, hello. hello yeah your voice was breaking now it's fine what you, Your voice is still breaking. Is it, is it better now? Yeah, right. Now it's better. Please go on. Okay, let me see. Why don't All right, I... I was breaking actually, not you. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Okay, 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 okay. No issues. But anyway, so I was saying, I think the environment is a different environment right now. When somebody is starving and you give them cash, they behave in a different way than when a person has a stomach full and gets some extra cash to spend. Then, you know, I agree in a lot of cases, men are not as responsible with that cash because they might service a short-term need, which isn't as, you know, what, right. what the spouse would do with the kids and family in their mind. But these are not those environments. You need to get that cash as, as fast as possible. So what we've done now is this rosy blue app, we have turned it into a need assessment app. So Joby agents who have the rosy blue app, now they can ask people, are you unemployed? And it has a brief form from which we can quickly establish how urgent their need is. And then we get their job and profession. And once we do that, we upload their profile onto a crowdfunding platform that will launch next week. And we will automatically identify the neediest people and we will spray them cash through an SMS, they'll go to an Easy Pass or Jazz Cash agent, and they will retrieve the money. It's fast, instant, real time. Or job, job market open ho jati hai. To phir unko hum jobs bhi denge usi platform ke through. So oh, I think that would be it. Thank you so much for being with us, and all of you participants. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, I'm sorry the internet was creating problems, but then again, as we say, maybe a submarine has just disconnected the wire. I am using PTCL. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that, but uh, thank you for being an amazing uh, audience for today. And uh, before we thank you so much, Monas Bhai, for being with us. It was lovely talking to you like always. And uh, thank you for giving beautiful insights and very, very useful insights to our audience today. And also thank you to startup community. Thank you, G, for being with us and uh, bearing with us uh, on our, for our event. And uh, before we sign off, I just wanted to thank you all audience. And also, I would just like you guys to take a moment after right after the session and uh, pray for all of those people that we have lost in this pandemic and all of those people um, who are fighting for their lives right now. And also for all those frontliners being our heroes these days. So and also very importantly, uh, make these days the most useful, you know, we don't really get time on our hands like this. Like, you know, once we're, we're done with university, this, our, our work life just begins and it never really stops, right? So if you are having these days, to, uh, these days, make the most out of it, learn new skills, find out your interests. Maybe, you know, there is an opportunity at this time. Think like an opportunist here. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Manas. Bye. See you. Bye-bye. Take care. I love this. Pleasure.